Welcome to the Orange Power Podcast. We're talking some cowgirl softball with Coach Kenny Gajewski, the head coach of the Oklahoma State Cowgirl Softball Team. Coach, it is always a pleasure to have you here, my friend. Well, Casey, it's always a pleasure to be on <laughs> with you and I your don't... sense of humor. <laughs> I, hey, I do my part to keep it loose <laughs> around here. Hey, um, let's talk about the week. Uh, man, you know, every week just seems to present these, these awesome opportunities to talk about great things happening. A sweep against Baylor in your Big 12 opener. You go to Tulsa, get a tough win. Um, it's been fun watching this team, and certainly that Friday night game against Baylor, about as entertaining as it gets. Yeah, four and a half hours of entertainment. Uh, <laughs> we could have played two normal games. Um, but, um, you know, we get into these unique situations. Our game just has some unique rules, and, and every once in a while they present themselves. And, um, you know, we got into one of those on Friday. We actually got down early in that game. Uh, I know it probably didn't look good for a lot of folks, but I, I, I never lost faith. Um, I know we can score. I know we can do things. Um, I felt like they took advantage of some, uh, you know, really good opportunities that they had. Uh, a little bit unlucky for us. A little bit lucky on their end. That's what our game is about. So it's not um, not taking shots. Um, and we just chipped away. We score four runs. We get it back to 5-4. And then we go out, and, and it looks like we're going to get out of it and put up a zero. And then we got runners on first and second. And we, we give up a double down the left field line. And here's where all the melee starts. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, basically just to, to go back and to clean that up, uh, we had runners at first and second base with two outs. The girl, was, the girl at second base for Baylor uh, was coming around to score. She was interfered with by our our third baseman. Megan had jumped up and then didn't move. And you got to give the runner, um, you know, a clear uh, a view of the, the the bag and a clear path. She obstructed that in some way. Um, while she was doing that, the girl missed third base, and we went home and scored. And then the girl at first came all the way around and scored. So we realized that the girl missed third base. Uh, we just went over and appealed, and, and we, threw, we threw the ball over to third, I think. I think Kyra actually ran to third first, yep, and we threw the did. ball to third. <laughs> the umpire then raised his arm as out. Well, now we got, we've got to figure out what we're going to do because it's interference, which is going to give the runner at second base home plate. She's going to be safe there. What I thought would happen is they would bring the girl back uh, from first base because there was so much going on um, and all that. So... Um, once we appealed and the umpire said out, it changed everything because the rule book says that you cannot score or advance to the next bag without hitting the bag in front of you. So umpires ask for a rule book because they haven't <laughs> seen this. And I told them, if you want the rules, they're right up here. It's all, you don't need to go any farther, but they didn't. Obviously they wanted a rule book. I would not have known this rule. Um, and so, um, first time I'd, I'd ever seen it happen. And for three umpires that have called a lot of games, first time they'd ever seen it happen. So they, they told us both, we want to get this call right. We're not sure. Uh, we think we know the way we had a rule. Um, but I wasn't thinking it was going to rule in our favor, and they already were. Got them the rule book. They disappeared. This took about 25 to 30 minutes to sort out. It was very awkward, very weird. Um, so they came back out. And they asked both coaches to come over. We talked. They read the first sentence in the rule book, in the paragraph, and I turned around and walked off. Now, some people thought I was getting thrown out. <laughs> but I knew that he was about to get thrown out because he was going to be so pissed. So, anyways, they read the, 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 the uh, rule. It was very clear. You cannot score, even if you're interfered with, without hitting the bag. So, with that being said, they, we get a force out at third. On the first runner, which means nothing else can happen, both runs come off the scoreboard, and the weekend turned right there. Yeah, you guys end up scoring, uh, tying it up. It goes into extra innings, and you win it in extras. Okay, so let's unpackage a couple of things. First off, I'm glad you and I have talked about this an awful lot, and I maybe you know some people have heard it, but what I love about he, this particular uh, medium and doing that is OSU Max is the only one had video of it because it wasn't televised, um, and so we get a chance to, to break it down and, and, and kind of see kind of what some of the things you're talking about. And so the other part of that is – um, you, you and I talked earlier in the week and, and maybe I'm making more of this than, than I, than I should, but 
I think you said to me there's a difference between interference and obstruction. Right. What is the difference? Do you know? Interference is by a defender. Obstruction is by the runner. Okay. Okay. So the the, the runner obstructs the defender. The defender interferes with the runner. That's the way I I I distinguish be, be, between them. And so for Glenn Moore after after that, so he obviously is upset with the situation. However, then he appeals whether she actually missed third or not, which apparently, based on video, I'm sure you've seen, it was very obvious she missed third. Um, and it is interesting, Coach, because the the interference occurred between second and third. If it had happened between third and home, you'd go well, okay. It, again, I think it's just intriguing. That's the great thing about Diamond Sports. You can create all kinds – people who know the rules inside and out, you can create certain scenarios, and they go, ooh, I don't know. I've never seen that. Well, wait yeah. a minute. And so she didn't go back to third. The other runner didn't go back to second. Lead runner's out. Inning's over. You guys go and win it. And, I mean, it was it was a huge call. But the important thing is – and I even talked to Mike Gundy about this. He goes, that's odd that all three umpires walked off the field. Usually somebody stays in a tens – the, the situation, and they alternate. But he said, man, thank goodness they got it right. And that's ultimately the best part of that whole story. I, I, I mean, if it would have gone against us, I would hope that I would eventually get to they got it right. It just didn't work in our favor. It was a little unlucky. Um, and um, I, I don't blame Glenn for being upset. Um, they're, trying to, they're, 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 they're trying to win. Um, and it was falling apart. And then they take a – you know, then they – kind of come back, get answers, so you're feeling really good about your team, and then that happens. So, and I want to go back to something else. Again, these are subtle things that you say that may be going passing, but you said at 5 nothing you still felt good. And you go, okay, does he really, really feel good? Well, the fact of the matter is you left Acock in there, and you had the conversation with John Barfield. What are we doing? Are we going to leave him? going to let you get – and you like, hey, we're going to score. It's what we do. We're okay here. So – you say that subtly, and I think some people go, really? Were you feeling that confident? Yeah. Well, you felt very confident, and you knew what this team was capable of, and they did exactly what you anticipated they would do. You know, I get frustrated with this group because I feel like at times we could, like, really pour it on some people, and it's like they kind of need a little bit of a nudge, and I don't want them to be, be like that. I want them to be doing the nudging, um, non, you know, relentlessly, part of the cowgirl way. So um, that could be my only fr- frustration with this team, but they never had a different look on their face. I didn't look, look out there and see one kid w- with her head down. I told Kyra, I'm really p- proud of you because you just kept giving us innings, and we needed that on a Friday night, um, and you, you, you were fearless. Didn't have your stuff, but you were fearless. You, you weren't letting up. You, weren't, you were just going after it, and that's what we got to have. So you go on to win that one. You win the next one 5 nothing. You win the third one 5-1. Uh, you know, not each game certainly has its own story and its its own drama, but you get the sweep of Baylor and keep pace with a couple of other teams in the league. And you know, you go back to Friday and I say you lose one. Well, it obviously this you still in a race for the Big Twelve title, but by winning that, it just keeps you right where you need to be as we move into series number two and then series number three. It's it, you can't win them all unless you win the first three, right? And you guys obviously found a way. Yeah, it's unique. I guess if you would look at our standings in the Big Twelve, you got three teams that are three and zero, and you've got three that are zero and three, and then Kansas that hasn't played yet. So I didn't think about that, but it's unique, yeah. and um, uh, you know, it's. I don't think anybody's shocked. No, because you got three very good. T- it's a top-heavy league. Yeah. It just is. But the three that are at the top are really good. Okay, so um, let's talk about Tulsa. You go over to Tulsa, and uh, it's a close ball game. You score one in the six. Looks like you're going to win it one nothing. They come back, get get a couple of really nice hits. They manufactured a run, tied it up, got close to maybe uh, taking the lead in uh, the eighth and you know later in the inning. But you guys get some a base runner on. Rachel Becker just smokes one. Out of the ballpark, you win 3-1 in extra innings. So now you've won two games in the last four in extra innings. And, you know, compare that to 14 shutouts and 10 run rules. Now we're winning some lengthened games. What does that say? You can win a lot of different ways. I, yeah, we, we can. And, and we, can, we can pitch as good as anyone, so we can be in every game. We can score when we're going well, like, like, like everybody that, that's, you know, elite. Um, and, um, 
you know, our defense has been really, really good. Last night we turned another double play, had a chance to turn a second one that Becker just couldn't get it out of her glove clean. Um, uh, it, it's it's amazing. Bloodworth continues to play great third base. Um, it's uh, It's been fun, fun to, to watch. This team can win. They've shown that they can win a, a lot of ways. I'd rather just blow some people out. It's a lot more fun. It's a lot easier on the on on the hair. You know what I mean? I feel like we're losing hair every every time we play. But um, you know, like like I said, um, we'll take whatever comes, and we'll we get what we earn. Um, no freebies here, um, and we get everybody's be- best shot. We get everybody's best crowds. It's kind of cool. You love it when I bring um, stats to the table. because you're love st- it. So amazing. Because <laughs> you're a stat guy. You're a numbers guy. Uh, so let's just look at a couple, all right? Awesome. You just mentioned fielding percentage. You play well defensively. You guys have a 984 fielding percentage. You're number four in the country. You guys have uh, at scoring uh, over nearly seven runs a game. That's a top ten number in the country. Uh, your batting average is 340. That's the top 10 number in the country. Shutouts, number five in the country. But when you look at those c- categories, it's interesting, Coach. You look at them, and you, there's, you know, you look at one category, and you see the top 10. Then you'd move that category over, and, well, you lose about four or five of those top 10 teams. They're not in the same there. Fielding, pitching, batting, all of those things have to come together. And there's about four or five teams that are right there. And when you look at those teams, it's not surprising the names. That's what great teams do. That's where you guys are. You are a great team in contention for a lot of things this year. Your numbers are in the top five. There's a reason why you're as good as you are. There's a reason why you're 30-2. and And all of those numbers, you're doing everything that is a facet of the game right now. You're doing it very, very well. I I mean, we've talked about this. Um, I actually hate when you give me all those stats. Um, So thank you for for, for that. My day's off to a great start. Um, But I'm really, you know me, you've been around me enough now that I will tell you exactly what we are. Um, And if it's not good, I'll let you know that we're gross at that area. Um, But this is a good team. And, um, you know, I just left the the office where we were talking about this weekend and um, and getting some of these young kids in. Uh, I want to get them in. Um, And I can't let our our start worried about stats like you keep bringing up (laughs) derail me from making good decisions for the longevity and long term health of our program. That's the thing I've got to, to keep in mind because I want to be here f- as long as the, they'll have me. And so to do that, I need to make sure that I'm doing my best to develop these young kids, develop some of the new kids that are here as transfers so that they can continue this on um, while trying to be the best team that we can be this year. Well, and again, you look at the number of pitchers you've used and the pinch hitters you've used and, you know, different kids getting different starts through injury. I mean, that is, the, again, in all truthfulness, that is what's awesome about this team is the youngsters and the kids that are coming in in certain role situations, accepting those and, and thriving in those situations. And when someone on this team is struggling in, a fa- in whatever area it might be, there is a backup that is pushing hard to get that opportunity. And whether it's just a a sub to fire the starter up and to maybe let them reset, or maybe it's a chance just to let them, okay, get a little bit of rest. Again, some of that's part of the uniqueness of this roster maybe than than you've ever had here at Oklahoma State. It's a a luxury. It's a curse. It's all that. (laughs) Uh, But I'll take the luxury part. Uh, The curse is just, you know, I I try to do a really good good job. I'm not not perfect of – continue to talk to those kids that aren't getting those at-bats and just tell them, hey, I'm not looking for you to get hits. I'm looking for you to just have good at-bats. Do not try to chase hits. That's a bad place to be. Um, so um, I'm, I'm, you know, we'll continue that. Uh, but um, it's really good to have this depth, and it, it's fun. Incarnate Word, you step out of a conference this weekend. You're the one that's got the bye. Um, and so you guys are headed down to San Antonio. I'm excited. Um, this is actually, uh, um, you know, people don't know a lot about Incarnate Word. I, I, I didn't know about it, to be honest, until my wife uh, that I was dating at the time was coaching there. Um, and I was like, man, I've never even heard of that. So you, you look into it and you see what did different schools are all about. Um, beautiful area. Uh, we got a lot of recruits. 
They come from the Houston, Texas area, um, in that area around there. Um, so they'll be, we'll be able to get to see a lot of kids. It's really a, a, a luxury for some of those kids to come see us, what, mm-hmm. what it looks like, what it, what it is. Um, we'll have a lot of folks that travel there because it's a fun place mm-hmm. to go eat and hang out and see some softball. And, and so I'm excited about that. But they are a good team. Um, you know, their record is, is uh, over 500. Um, uh, and they played some decent teams. And they haven't exactly been blown out. So uh, we're going to need to go play well. We need to play well for ourselves. I'm not even worried about Incarnate Word. I'm worried about Oklahoma State and uh, our jersey. That's all we're concerned about. I'm just thankful that we have games because we, at, at, at one point during the summer, I didn't think that we were going to have games. Well, and you know, it's interesting, yeah, to have this this weekend was off. Last thing, you know, you guys go to our, go to Tulsa, and it's sold out. You went to Conway and had a great crowd there. Incarnate Word bringing the number two team in the country there. They're going to bring some fans in there, which is awesome. Everybody wants to see, you know, the, the, the Cowgirl logo out there and the top-ranked team like that. But with that also comes one of two things. Either, you know, an opposing team, we always say don't let the name of the jersey bother you, right? Don't be intimidated by that. But the other side is true, too, that you get their best shot, right? When you're number two in the country, number one in the RPI, because you like that stat, um, is you know <laughs> that uh, you know you're going to get the best shot. So it is about Calgary softball, certainly, but it's different when you're, you got that little crooked number up there by your name. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, and we're getting used to that. We're, we're getting better at handling that um, over the last years, and, and um, it's different. It's a different kind of pressure that they feel. Um, you know, we, it's easy to say, well, I'm not sure why you guys would feel like that, but until you're in those shoes, um, you don't understand, and I don't understand. Um, I, I have to just work my way through it all and try to help them be the best that they can be and um, help them dun, 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 dun understand a lot of things that aren't really related to softball. Yeah, you know, it's going to be fun, though. Obviously, then you get, you got to go back on the road midweek, back on the road. It's going to be a while since we see you uh, between now and uh, your next home visit. But best of luck. It's Saturday at uh, 11 and then Saturday at uh, 1.30, uh, the two games with Incarnate Word in San Antonio. Coach, appreciate the time as always. We'll see you next week. Thank you. All right, we'll see you guys back here next week as well for Coach Kenny G. I'm Casey Kendrick. We'll see you next time on the Orange Power Podcast. <laughs>